welcome students on behalf of the board of studies of the institute of chartered accountants of india it is my proud privilege to present before you a webcast program on how to prepare for chartered accountancy examinations with more than 1 million students on rolls and 2 lakh uh, members as qualified chartered accountants the institute of chartered accountants of india is one of the largest educational system in the world icai has been acknowledged as partner in nation building by great visionary leaders image of the institute and the qualification is built developed and maintained by the students who had undergone the studies in that particular institution the quality inputs and the certification or the qualification process being consistently maintained by the past more than 6 decades by the institute of chartered accountants of india is one of the driving force for the image which the chartered accountants profession and the chartered accountants at the individual level are maintaining throughout the world while the board of studies of the institute of chartered accountants of india takes care of the inputs part the training uh, training and the theoretical training and the article training it is the examination department of icai maintains the quality by way of uh, conducting world class examinations to maintain world class quality assurances from the qualified chartered accountants friends we are having the ca examinations at the three levels cpt common proficiency test level intermediate level popularly known as uh, integrated professional uh, competency examinations and the final examinations the examinations requirement and the quality expectations may differ from one level to another level to share the experiences to advise the students at the right strategy to face these examinations we have with us uh, ca tn manoharan with us uh, to conduct this webcast program welcome you uh, uh, ca tn manoharan sir on behalf of the board of studies and the institute of chartered accountants of india i extend a very warm welcome to you sir friends you will be glad to know ca manoharan born in a freedom fighters family is a post graduate in commerce law graduate from madras university and a fellow chartered accountant in practice he has authored books for professionals and students on indian tax law and he is an acknowledged teacher having been visited faculty of uh, renowned institutions he has, he was the president of the institute of chartered accountants of india he was in the board of insurance and regulatory uh, insurance regulatory and development authority of india and in the committees constituted by reserve bank of india securities and exchange board of india cndg and uh, central board of direct taxation friends ca manoharan is presently a member of the advisory board on banks commercial and financial frauds constituted by central vigilance commission and also he is a director in view companies and widely traveled over 18 80 countries he is a visiting faculty at the national academy on direct taxes nagpur he addresses in the orientation program for income tax appellate tribunal members friends you will be glad to know ca manoharan has been conferred the lifetime achievement award in the year 2005 and for the sake of honor award in the year 2007 by the rotary international he received the business leadership award from honorable finance minister under the aegis of ndtv profit in the october 2009 and in the business category of cnn ibn indian of the year 2009 award from the honorable prime minister of india in december 2009 he is part of the satyam limited uh, revival team CATM TN Manoharan is the recipient of the civilian honor Padma Shri award from the president of India on 7th April 2010 friends over to CATN Manoharan sir for his uh, sharing his experience and expertise on how to prepare for the CA examinations over to CATN Manoharan thank you sir thank you dr parma sivan it's my privilege to be part of this webcast program of icai to guide all the students on how to prepare for ca examinations i had the uh, glance of all the questions that were raised by the students through this uh, channel 
and most of the questions were relating to the methodology to be adopted for preparation and how to comprehend a particular subject either at the IPCC level or at the final level and the examination techniques on how to be successful in the CPT examination or IPCC or final for that matter. There are also specific questions on the attitude or the approach that needs to be adopted in specific instances. I will be taking upon your questions as we proceed further, but for the time being let me tell you in a generic manner that preparation for CA examination whether it is at the CPT level or IPCC level or for that matter final level the ingredients are the very same the approach and attitude that is expected of you is also the same. So therefore, let us not discriminate or distinguish the various levels of examination conducted by the ICI. Suffice it to say that the CPT level students are expected to be thorough on the basics of the subjects within their syllabus. The IPCC students are expected to have a reasonable working knowledge on all the contents of the syllabus and the final level students are expected to possess advanced level of knowledge. So this is what you know segregates all of you into various levels in terms of appearing for the examination. Now as far as the prerequisites for a chartered accountancy student is concerned you know let me say that first and foremost you should have the aspiration to qualify as a chartered accountant. Unless you have the basic interest to become a professional, to become a finance professional and do that too particularly as a chartered accountant, you know the journey will not be as smooth as you it ought to be. So therefore that basic interest you must imbibe within yourself you must aspire to qualify as a chartered accountant because that aspiration will be the driving force all through the journey of your preparation at various levels of the chartered accountancy examinations. Having said that I must also insist upon your ability to work hard, your inclination to sweat it out. Most of the questions I glance through from many of you relate to the success being achieved in a short span of time. I have started preparing this month, will I be able to take on May examination? How long do I need to work hard? You know these are all the spectrum of questions. Let me tell you, for some of you chartered accountancy examinations may appear to be quite easy. For many of you it might appear to be difficult. But all that you need to realize is merely because it is difficult, it does not mean it is impossible. It is possible for every one of you. When you consider it as difficult, all that needs to be done from your end is you must work hard. Maybe you must work harder. So that is what it implies. So therefore, the second aspect I want to mention to you is you must have unconditional commitment to work hard and besides this you know in terms of the perception about this examination what can motivate you what can guide you what can support you what can stand by you to achieve success is self-confidence self-confidence is a very important prerequisite for any student so to succeed in this mission to become a chartered accountant. Therefore, my dear friends, besides aspiration, besides the inclination to work hard, self-confidence is of utmost importance. Then the next comes dedication. Dedication implies that you prioritize on what to do and what not to do. The moment you have taken up this course, Chartered Accountancy Curriculum, 
as your target or the goal you must dedicate to this task on hand you must prioritize in such a way that nothing else matters rest of the world does not exist for you till you accomplish this goal i am not for a moment suggesting that you must renounce this world while staying connected by all means with the rest of the world your focus your concentration must be glued to this sole mission of qualifying as a chartered accountant and that's what is implied by mentioning that dedication is one of the prerequisites of every one of you aspiration then ability to work hard self confidence dedication then what else the last one as a prerequisite i would like to impress upon you is determination the journey till you pursue the goal achieve it accomplish it is not going to be easy to stay put to stay on course you need to have a determination at no point of time you should retrace your steps at no point of juncture you should abort your endeavor that is determination so therefore my dear young friends have this five requisites to qualify as a chartered accountant introspect introspect whether you possess these requisites okay many of you may say yes we do possess these requisites we have the aspiration to qualify as a chartered accountant we are willing to work hard and absolute self confidence is within us and dedication and determination we are willing to infuse within our style of functioning till we achieve the goal then what next one of one of the most common questions that all of you have raised which i glance through is what is the strategy of achieving success therefore let me deal with the strategy in a detailed manner this encompasses even the questions on how do i prepare for that subject cost accounts mafa taxation whatever may be the subjects that you are worried about in terms of preparation but the strategy is can be condensed into five piece the first one is planning you know uh, but to do this planning you need to have passion so therefore passion succeeded by planning then preparation practice and ultimately perseverance so these five p's will define the strategy for you to qualify as a chartered accountant when i mention passion what does it mean the best example for passion is sachin tendulkar who aspired to be a cricketer but the passion he had was to play for the country india and that passion became a reality when he was 16 years old and he continues to excel even after 24 long years of playing cricket for this country and therefore passion is nothing but the burning desire the urge the zeal that should be within you driving you pursue and constantly to seek for this achievement to become a chartered accountant so passion is the you know hallmark of the strategy that you need to adopt then comes planning if you fail to plan that means you are planning to fail there is nothing worth remembering or memorable in your life can be achieved without proper planning planning is the basic essential inevitable ingredient of your strategy and in terms of planning 
you have to plan on a long term basis as well as short term basis when you look at a corporate entity they would plan as to what they want to be by 2015 the country as a whole dr apj abdul kalam desired that by 2020 we should be a very powerful nation a super economy this is long term perception but to reach there what is that you should be doing on a periodical basis on a weekly basis monthly basis that is short term planning so therefore let us look at what is that you need to be doing on long term planning angle first and foremost you need to be very clear on what kind of books and materials you need to gather for all the subjects in your syllabus our board of studies brings out with these study materials for each of the subjects so that in any case you will be getting in addition to that maybe one more textbook recommended by ICI you can possess so the institute study material plus one textbook would be an excellent combination for you to comprehend a subject and master it then in terms of the attempt to be made the day you joined the course it would have been very clear to you as to when you are eligible to appear for the examination it is at that point of time you have to make up your mind on which attempt whether it is may 2013 or may to november 2014 or is it in uh, you know 2015 so on and so forth so therefore you will have to be very clear on which attempt you are going to aim at and again is it going to be for all this uh, papers of both the groups or will it be group wise if it is ipcc or final if it is cpt there is absolutely you know such a so choice does not exist so therefore make up your mind on which attempt you are going to uh, endeavor to appear and whether it is for both the groups or for a single group then comes what is that you are going to do will it be a self study or will you attend classes icai also conducts classes in many of the centers and in some of the centers there may not be classes and you also have renowned faculties across india who might be you know taking uh, classes for the students so it is left to you to choose which mode and which platform you will make use of to assimilate knowledge to comprehend the subject some of the students have also asked is it possible for me to make a self study absolutely it is possible there are rank holders who have attained that feat only by self study so therefore it is not inevitable that you need to be attending certain classes but the ability to grasp a subject and the uh, you know enabling factors which a faculty will be able to guide you in some of the aspects if you think it is essential for you to excel it is inevitable for you to qualify then you can plan for attending classes and time it also in such a manner that it doesn't clash with your practical training articleship training and it is also timed in such a manner that it doesn't come in conflict with your uh, you know schedule for study holidays revision all those things so therefore planning for attending the classes and timing them in an appropriate manner is also very essential then comes the training period in the office to which you are attached how do you go about completing the practical training of for 3 years and that schedule you must be very clear and when do you take holidays and how do you synchronize it to relate to your study holidays and for appearance before uh, in the examination so these are all matters which you need to plan on a long term basis and as part of your training you need to also attend and complete 
these information technology training course and also the GMCS course. So these two courses also you must uh, you know plan it well ahead and see to it that you complete it within the framework of the ICI regulations and within the time schedule that you aspire to complete them. Then finally you know preparing for examination getting the best of exposure as part of articleship training or the twin objectives which you must predominantly pursue during this period of your curriculum. In addition to these two, whenever you can find time, you should also work on improving your overall personality, expanding the knowledge horizon within you, build a database develop a knowledge bank within you which will enlarge the scope of your intelligence, the knowledge base and also undergo some of the small training programs or the short duration courses which will you know encompass certain skill sets, empowering you with these skill sets. You know, as a youth of this nation, you know, you should be proud that the entire nation is awaiting your arrival as a finance professional. Considering the demographic composition of uh, the world, not just India is awaiting your arrival as a finance professional, even the rest of the world is eagerly awaiting your arrival because all the economists certainly need the young talent that is available in India. While American population is stagnated population, European, Australian, Japanese population is a declining population, Chinese population is an aging population. It is India's population which is a young population and therefore this demographic advantage has to be translated into a demographic dividend for the entire world. So, it will be appropriate for you to work on empowering you with knowledge and skill sets which might not be within the syllabus. To put it illustratively, you need to improve your proficiency in terms of your communication skills, linguistic skills, technological skills, managerial skills, professional skills. All this you can do side by side in your own way depending on the environment in which you are positioned and the background with which you operate. So therefore that also could be part of the long term planning. Having dealt with uh, the long term planning objectives, let me tell you how do you reach to the goal on a short term basis, how do you go about planning. First and foremost, you should have the habit of planning on a weekly basis. You should have your schedule. In fact, the best disciplined uh, student, you know, can borrow what he was doing during your, his school curriculum. In the school, you, you used to operate based on weekly planners, timetables that are given by the schools, respective schools. So the same discipline you need to continue because Chartered Accountancy course has vast syllabus, divergent topics and voluminous study is expected of you. Therefore unless you have a discipline in terms of utilization of time, it, you will find it difficult to comprehend. So therefore weekly planner is the first aspect that you should uh, work upon. Secondly, you know for each subject you must have a earmarked notebook or you must have bunch of loose sheet of papers tagged on together which you can use as uh, the working papers for preparing notes, for jotting down points, for even mastering the theory by writing and verifying the answers, for working out problems repeatedly many times, variety of problems, all those things need to be done in a systematic manner by having exclusive notebook for each subject and the notebooks can keep on getting exhausted as volume 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth till you uh, appear for the examination. So therefore have that kind of a 
earmarked notebook or papers kind of an approach then the third one is how do you allocate time you know during training period the time at your disposal for studies would be limited because you will have to uh, you know reach the office or the client's place and then you will uh, return back in the evening so on and so forth but all said and done considering the volume of the syllabus the best approach is to start from day one if not from day one day two if not from day two day three the earlier you start the better it is and if you have not started till yesterday start from tonight after this lecture every day in spite of you are attending to your office training schedule if only you inculcate within you the habit of reading these subjects at least for one hour in the morning one hour in the evening if possible two hours and two hours in the worst case scenario at least half an hour in the morning and half an hour before going to bed if only you develop this habit of consistency regularity then it will be very nice for you to half load the burden of comprehending voluminous syllabus so therefore my dear students time allocation is very very important the during the study holidays also how do you ration your time for preparation in 24 hours you must be in a position to spend 50% for preparing for your exams ideally 12 hours some of you may spend 2 or 3 hours less some of you might be in a position to spend at least on few days one or two hours more than the 12 hours which is a standardized time that can be used on a daily basis even on an average if you can effectively utilize 10 hours in a day that would be an ideal effort during study holidays when you have nothing else to do nothing else to focus upon the rest of the time should be devoted for sleeping relaxing and eating and done in proper mix and rotation one more important point which i want to share in terms of time allocation is the most fresh hour during the day you can allot for the most difficult subject maybe the dull hour you can allot for your favorite subject these are all some of the tactics that you can adopt to ensure that the utilization of time is done in an effective manner and considering the fact that your examinations are generally held ipcc and final are generally held between 2 to 5 pm in the afternoon prepare your schedule in such a way that you are at your best between 2 to 5 in terms of delivery in terms of performance so your mental faculties should be tuned to be most fresh during this 3 hours schedule and that you can train yourself right from inception of your preparation and the last point i want to mention about your time is during this 3 to 5 years of your time that you spend for chartered accountancy curriculum remember one thing you are at an age and at this stage in your life which is laying the foundation for the rest of your life the quality of the foundation laid during this 3 to 5 years span of time will be so critical to determine the profile of your future the brightness of your future the resume that will evolve over a period of time in future and therefore during this 5 years of your age 
may be spanning from 17 years to 22 years or 18 years to 23 years you know depending on when it starts and when it ends into uh, culminating into the chartered accountancy qualification this five year period my dear young students do not spend time but invest time the quality qualitative investment that you make out of time will ensure the return is so glorious so heartwarming so accomplishing that you will cherish the investment that you made during this five year period so therefore remember that you do not have the liberty of spending your time but you have the privilege of investing your time then comes prioritization you know you may have to do half a dozen things during this five years you may have to do many uh, responsibilities and roles social academic or otherwise how do you prioritize there are only top two priority uh, pr uh, pr uh, things that need to be given priority first is you know to successfully undergo practical training for the three years second is prepare for each of the levels of the CA examinations and excel in each of them besides these two tasks on hand you may still do few other things but remember none of those things should come in conflict with these two tasks which rank in priority so other than these two everything else can be done only when they do not come in conflict with these two and only when you find additional time to do them without you know making these two priorities uh, suffer or get a setback then comes periodical review not that once you plan at the inception the same will hold good all through your journey of qualifying from time to time you may have to review your planning schedule and you may have to modify it you may have to improvise it you may have to fine tune it in fact planning will help you to also evaluate how many hours you derailed from the scheduled you know task how you were got distracted how the time was diverted for non priority items so this review is not only to improvise but also to bring in more discipline more systematic approach so that you are not lost in the journey of uh, achieving this goal and ensure for heaven's sake ensure that you do not get distracted because what appears to be a short distraction a small deviation by the time you look back and realize might have resulted in wastage of few months even few weeks lost could be very very fatal at this stage of your curriculum so therefore ensure that you always stay on course without any distractions till you reach the finishing line and those who suffer out of the lack of concentration deviation or distractions you know uh, find it very difficult to recoup and recover to march ahead with this target so therefore it's my you know sincere request to each one of you avoid distractions because time once you deviate from the path from the chosen path of becoming a chartered accountant the time that you lose would be unknown to you and by the time you realize it it may be too late do not belong to the category of students who get distracted and later look back and repent and find it difficult to retrieve and uh, retrace their steps so therefore that is my 
sincere wish and suggestion that you stay on course in the chosen path till you accomplish the target my dear young students now let us come to the critical part of the presentation many of you have asked how do i prepare for that subject this subject let me tell you the preparation methodology is not different for different subjects it is uniform it is the same for every subject in your syllabus and the preparation methodology you know can be comfortably adopted one standardized for all the subjects first let us ask a simple question when do we start when do you start preparing as i mentioned do not postpone things till study holidays the earlier you start the better it is every day consistent preparing i was mentioning during your training period also you can prepare for at least one hour in the morning one hour in the evening and in the weekends you know at least on sundays you can spend about 10 hours to further that process so by this methodology you have to start at the earliest in fact study holidays is the time not to begin your preparation but to fine tune it to strengthen it to comprehend the subject in a more you know commendable manner it is meant for that so therefore start at the earliest now what is the schedule of preparation that you should follow any subject you need to have uh, three rounds of preparation that is three times you will have to from the start to the finish you need to comprehend the subject thrice and the first time that you read a subject can be described as familiarization round this round helps you to know what is in store for you in the syllabus right from the insub beginning to the end in a professional examination like chartered accountancy a student should know something about everything and everything about something which means that every subject contains a syllabus where you can do abc analysis what is this abc analysis is all about you divide the syllabus into three compartments three segments this you can do it easily with the help of your faculty or seniors or even by looking at the past question papers on how the importance is given chapter wise topic wise i am not asking you to look into the past question papers for making any omissions or to pick and choose on which topic to study which topic to omit that is not the objective the objective is to do abc analysis you should be in a position to categorize certain topics within the syllabus as falling within a category which means they are all very important topics then b category topics which are moderately important then the left outs the rest are c category topics which are less important whether it is more moderately or less remember all the topics within your syllabus are important topics that is why even c category i described it as less important which means which implies that you cannot afford to omit them but you can prorate the time that you are going to spend on the syllabus accordingly so a a category of topics you need to spend the maximum time b category moderate time c category lesser time so pro, you know proportionately for spending the time it will help you and in first round familiarization round you need to comprehend all the abc category of subjects which shall be a casual reading 
a reading which you do at a faster pace as much speed that you adopt to read a fiction to read a novel to read a story you can try to adopt in the familiarization round this will help you to comprehend something about everything in the syllabus then you move on to the second round which is the comprehending round this round is an in depth preparation because you want to comprehend the subject very strongly from the basics fundamentals conceptual understanding and you need to be thorough and for that this round will help you you need to you should not just read you should as you read you jot down the points you take notes you solve illustrations you work out problems you also repeatedly work out certain exercises so therefore this is how the comprehending round will be at a slow pace which can consume maximum time but you will be progressing in your mastering the subject in a slow but steady manner so that is how it will happen then comes you know your uh, ability to fill the gaps that is in the third round of preparation after familiarization round after comprehending round mastering round this third round as you go through you can do it with a moderate pace neither the fast pace that you adopted in the first round nor the slow pace that you adopted in the comprehending round but a more moderate pace this will help you in fact many students call this as a revision revision is nothing but this third round mastering round because wherever you consider your grip over the subject is not adequate you can spend more time wherever you think you are very familiar you can go faster so it is on those lines you need to adopt this third round to tie up the loose ends to you know bridge the gap in your understanding of the subject so that will bring all these subjects in equilibrium all the topics with uh, you know comfort zone that will be given to uh, in terms of your understanding so once you are through with these three rounds you know by the time you pass through these three rounds you would have exhausted for each of the subjects several pages or maybe sometimes few notebooks also so that is how you will have to look at these three rounds now let me tell you i was in the as a prerequisite i was mentioning you should have the inclination to work hard and now i was dealing with three rounds of preparation isn't it and i emphasized on you are writing notes working out problems you know trying to master the subjects so this hard work and these three rounds of preparation you will have to synchronize because you know you just cannot achieve something in terms of chartered accountancy qualification by a shortcut method by trying to adopt a, you know an abridged version of preparation that is not the right approach let me tell you an anecdote you know one guy wanted to become an expert in shooting so he approached an expert and requested him to train him in shooting so this expert agreed bought him a gun got him a license and told him i am leaving out of station after 10 days i'll be back then i'll come to your house i know you have a gigantic wall in the backyard so we will go to the backyard of your house and then we will practice after 10 days the expert came and they went to the backyard and the expert was stunned to look at the wall because on the wall in the backyard there were circles of different sizes and in each of those circles he was flabbergasted to find the bullet mark 
in the center somebody must uh, has hit in each of those circles at bull's eye so he asked being amazed who did this the beginner who is yet to start learning said i only shot then he was uh, you know astonished he asked him for 15 years i have been in this field even i cannot do uh, this kind of a precision shooting so how did you manage to do did you go close to the wall and shoot then this person said no the same distance as all of you maintain before you know as a standard practice then he said then you must uh, you don't need uh, any guidance you must teach me how to do this for which that person answered answer is very simple the technique is very simple all of you draw the circle and shoot whereas i shoot and then draw the circle that makes the difference let me tell you my dear young friends in real life situation it never happens like this in a competitive event in a ca examination you cannot achieve success by any such shortcut method so therefore you need to sweat it out you need to have a methodical systematic approach through these three rounds familiarization round comprehending round and mastering round by which you will be in a position to gain command over the entire syllabus spanning over the uh, number of subjects that are contained in your syllabus i we just analyzed as to when do we start preparing now it is also time to learn when do we stop when do we conclude when do we terminate our preparation in fact i asked a batch of students you know before you your examination after you complete preparation what do you do to put it differently after you conclude your preparation before the actual examination what do you do the reply was amusing they said where is the gap there is no gap in between our completing preparation and the commencement of the examination we keep on preparing and the examination comes and we write the exams that should not be the approach my dear young students you must complete your preparation at least you know two weeks before the examination if you are preparing for ipcc one month before the examination if you are preparing for final what do i mean when i say you must complete preparation what i mean is there should be nothing new learnt after that point of time you should not be trying to learn gather new information related to the examination no new knowledge acquisition after that cut off date so therefore once you draw a line say for example if not one month at least you should be in a position to conclude your preparation let us say for may examination you should have completed your preparation by today for november examination by october 10th you should complete your preparation for ca final and then the next question will arise what do you do during this 20 days gap for ipcc that two weeks gap before the commencement of the examination that takes us to the next p you know having the passion you have done the planning and you also did the preparation through these three rounds you know which i described now comes practice which is very critical practice for performance is another essential ingredient in the strategy many of the brilliant students who have immense knowledge in the contents of the syllabus command over the subject find themselves unable to succeed in the examination what is the reason inability to present the answers as how they are expected by the person who is going to evaluate the answer sheets so this is what we call as 
performance gap. You have the ability to perform, but you are not able to deliver. And that is where practice to perform is very, very critical. You will appreciate, my dear young friends, when I say, it is not the question of you are knowing the answer that gets you the mark. It is your ability to enable the examiner to know what you know that gets you the mark. Then how do you enable the examiner to know what you know? Only by writing model examinations. At least two mark exams for every subject is an essential one. I am not for a moment trying to say that you just cannot pass without writing model examinations. Because some of you in the audience might say that I qualified IPCC without writing model exams. Maybe possible. I am not trying to say that you cannot pass without writing model examinations. All that I am trying to say is you cannot fail if you have written model examinations. Why not ensure, secure your pass by writing model examinations? Because, you know, for some of these students who prepare well, who attempt, who fail, but recovering from that failure, learning from that failure, gaining experience from that first attempt failure, in the second attempt they get all India rank. The reason is the experience they have gained. Now, why do you gain experience in the real examination? Why not you gain experience by writing model examination and learn the lessons, identify the mistakes that you are capable of committing, eliminate them, eradicate them, minimize them and, you know, go to the real examination as a seasoned examinee. So, two model exams for each subject makes it 16 model examinations for final. So, you should be in a position to write two model examinations in the same sequence or in any sequence for before you appear in the real examination. And one critical question which many of the students have asked, how do we revise before the examination? Because st many students who find that they need 48 hours to revise a subject, 36 hours to revise a subject when halfway through their preparation remain in the same pace of revision even just before the examination therefore in spite of the fact that ICA provides one holiday in between two examinations you are not in a comfortable position to revise the whole subject you feel the time is inadequate when we were writing exams there were no holidays in between the exams we used to write con consecutively on consecutive days and there are certain professional bodies who hold their exams, one exam in the morning, one exam in the evening. So, how do you manage this revision is one of the critical questions which many of you have asked. Let me answer that particular point. See, as you write two model examinations for each subject, your ability to revise faster also is inculcated in you. Maybe initially you needed 36 hours to revise a subject. That time should come down to 24 hours, one month before the examination. And as you are revising for two model exams, it should still get condensed into 12 hours, 15 hours. You should be in a position to effectively revise by the time you reach the real examination, twice at least, if not thrice, twice you will be in a position to successfully revise your uh, for your examination. That will be the pace, that will be the speed with which you are able to comprehend the subject. You know, initially when you read uh, your notes, you may have to read word by word to assimilate. Later, line by line to assimilate. Later, much later, para by para. And by the time you write the model exams, you will be in a position to comprehend the contents page by page. As you turn the page, you will be in a position to glance the contents of that page in a span of few seconds, few minutes. A category, few minutes. C category, few seconds. This is how you will be in a position to revise effectively 
at the same time at a faster pace. Let me also tell you at this stage, my dear young friends, you know, from uh, you know, uh, comprehension round to the mastering round, also you would have solved many problems. You should be able to monitor the time that you have taken to solve a particular pro Every problem, when you commence solving it, note down the time. When you completed it, again you should have noted down the time. You should measure how many minutes it took to solve that problem. One week later, one month later, when you solve the same problem, you should be in a position to compare and see how faster you are able to solve, how accurately you are able to solve. Lesser number of minutes, lesser number of mistakes or no mistakes. This is the progress you need to monitor. This is how you will have to effectively, you know, become competitive in terms of presentation in the examination. And in the model examination, you will be able to still advance yourself to solve the problems at a much faster pace and you will be gaining time. You will be gaining control over non-committing of mistakes. So these, you know, to us, twin tributes of history compete with the millions who write across the country in the examination. You have unknown rivals, unknown competitors who are competing to qualify. And how do you gain over the and succeed? Have an edge over them by acquiring this speed and accuracy. You know, two model exams per subject. It not only improves your speed and accuracy, it also removes your fear and tension. See, all along you keep preparing, but you face the examination directly. Everybody is bound to have that kind of initial hiccups, fear and tension. By writing model exams, you overcome that. You totally eliminate fear and tension. Then it sharpens your ability even to understand the questions. Two students who read the questions, one understands it straight away correctly and solves it. Another one understands it wrongly, goes in a wrong path for 10 minutes, then realizes the mistake, scores out that answer, writes the proper answer. In the process, he has lost valuable 10 minutes. So you should not belong to that category. Even to read and understand the question, you need training. And that is what is provided while you write the model exams. And finally, better presentation of answers. You know, you will gain in terms of quality, legibility, clarity in presentation. That will be yet another advantage in terms of what you gain out of the model examinations. Having mentioned the, you know, strategy, the five P's in terms of passion, in terms of your planning, preparation, practice, I must also mention you should have perseverance. And about perseverance, maybe for the time being I'll defer and you know, before I deal with perseverance, let me deal with, because as we are talking about practice for performance, what are the presentation skills that you need to focus upon in the examination? For that, let us pick up few examination techniques. In terms of examination techniques, my dear students, you know, you need to know how to manage the time. You, all of, all the students are given 180 minutes to score 100 marks. And again, let me not tell you, it is not from a pool of marks, you are asked to grab as much as you can. No. Each student is reserved with 100 marks. Therefore, you have an exclusive quota of 100 marks available to you. How much of that you are in a position to grab? You are able to gain over the 180 minutes. For that, attempting 100 marks, attempting questions, carrying 100 marks is essential. You should not omit or skip any question. And therefore, time management I have seen students who knew answers for all the questions but come out and say I could not attempt because you know time was insufficient. So for want of time you should not miss out uh, writing answers. So time management. For that what you should do? You should ration your answers. If a question carries 20 marks 
and uh, you can afford to spend 30 minutes in answering it, you should be in a position to do that. So, on a prorata basis, about 1.5 minutes uh, for each mark, if you can do it, so that even if there is some complication, some age, somewhere you get stuck up, you have a cushion of 30 more minutes, isn't it? 180 minutes, 150 minutes for actual performance, 30 minutes reserve is always there uh, to spend additionally in difficult uh, situations. So therefore, time management is one essential thing. Second thing is sequencing. How do you sequence your answers? It is not necessary that you should numerically proceed and answer the questions. You can answer in whatever sequence you are more comfortable with. The, uh, I would recommend, you know, you, you get 15 minutes before the start of the examination just to read and assimilate the questions, isn't it? So in that 15 minutes you can decide, uh, decide on the strategy of sequencing the answers. How do you sequence? Put all the questions in three compartments. First compartment, again, well known and easy, less time consuming. So you can answer the, the first compartment. Second compartment, known but time consuming or difficult. So attempt that in the second sequence. The last sequence is the rest of the questions. Hopefully it should be nil, but even if you have some, that is the, you know, you push them to the last stage and uh, try to do that. And even in that first or second compartment, you thought it is known and easy or known and time consuming, attempted to do it, but you get stuck up somewhere. A lot few grace minutes, few additional minutes to uh, resolve it, to crack it. But still, if it is not falling in place, what do you do? You do not struggle with it. You skip it, leave the space, attempt the next one and go on. After attempting all the questions, come back and if time permits, try to close or solve or finish or tally the balance sheet, do all that. In a professional examination, you know, it is not necessary that you must perfectly finish it for you to get the marks. You will get proportionate marks. So therefore, sequencing is another technique. Then working notes and assumptions must be part of your answer. It is not enough if you just give the main solution. You have to support your main solution with assumptions that you made or working notes which uh, you know were used to draw the conclusions. Then legibility and clarity. Do not make it a cumbersome process for the examiner to read your answers and a lot. I am not saying your handwriting should be you know beautiful or you know all that. With whatever style you have practiced legibility and clarity and again in a professional examination quality and relevance go together it is not the size of the answer that matters brevity is good enough but brevity coupled with quality legibility and clarity should get you the best of the marks so that is how you should be in a position to proceed in terms of examination techniques let me also tell you you know what happens in uh, difficult situations? You, uh, you are prepared well and you go to the examination hall and you meditate for few uh, minutes or seconds and uh, you think of your parents or your teacher or you know the divine, uh, you invoke the divine blessings. All that happens, you take, I mean, deep breath and position yourself and you are ready to collect the question paper and read it, analyze it, decide the strategy, sequencing and then you have 180 minutes to perform, isn't it? At that point of time or as you are revising for that day's examination or the next day's examination, do not have any prediction as to how the question paper is expected to be or what it ought to be. One thing certain about CA examination is that the questions can be most unexpected. The pattern need not be predictable. So therefore, go with a mindset where you are willing to face any pattern of question paper, any composition of questions. So with that open mind, 
with a willingness to face the challenge if you go then the you will not have the so called initial shock or the surprise that you know uh, paralyzes you from performing to your best so therefore never have this predictability then second one please do not consider ca examination as one another examination that gives you puts you to memory test no no doubt memory helps you memory power is required for you to have the knowledge content to be translated into the expected answers but have a conceptual approach because if you are very strong on concepts whatever be the methodology of or pattern of the question whatever is the case study that is framed you will be in a position to give the required answer it is not the exact question that you solved that is going to come a modified version of that would invariably come and in such a situation what will stand by you is the conceptual understanding and not just the memory then again as a performer desist from evaluating your performance during the examination hours or after the examination hours for heaven's sake do not assume the role of an evaluator a performer should not be a judge you just cannot sit in judgment over your performance even while you are performing or after you completed performing that job is left to someone else and your job is to try to put your heart and soul give your best and try to excel even in the most adverse situation even if the situation is so bad that you have doubts about your ability to succeed does not matter you are there to give your best that 180 minutes nobody can desist you from giving your best nobody can expel you from the examination hall you just cannot retire hurt even if it is impossible for you to perform that 180 minutes that pitch is given to you for you to bat undeterred determined till the 180th minute keep hitting keep you know solving keep scoring whatever way so that should be so never assume the role of an evaluator be non emotional as a performer you should neither be shocked or feel depressed nor you should be celebrating because it is to your expectation or it is easy because when you are emotional you tend to commit mistakes when you are uh, joyful also you are uh, it marks your performance levels and standards of delivery and let me tell you students you know you just cannot afford to be a pessimist in the examination hall while you are preparing you know in general life in human life they would say you must always be an optimist you should never be a pessimist i would tend to be uh, giving you a different message as far as the ca examination preparation approach attitude is concerned be a pessimist at up to a particular point of time and at a certain stage be an optimist when should you be pessimist when you are preparing for the examination you must be pessimist you must prepare for the worst you must prepare for the most difficult paper you must prepare for a tough question paper so therefore be a pessimist as you are preparing be an optimist as you walk into the examination hall from till the 180th minute till the last examination right from the first to the last examination all the three hours each you should be the best optimist in this world you should even in the adverse situation be able to think i should be able to score the maximum marks and keep toiling keep slogging every minute with that you know motivation with that target in your mind and let me tell you my dear uh, young friends never have a breaking point you should never be you know stunned by any pattern of question paper you should believe that 
you have to sail through all the examinations till the last minute let me also clarify on some of the wrong notions which are reflected in many of the questions one of the uh, you know thought process that is there circulating which has culminated into few questions is you know is there a predetermined pass percentage institute the ICI will not pass beyond a certain percentage ICA will bring down the pass percentage these are all wrong notions there is no predetermined pass percentage at all the pass percentage de depends upon the performance of the students the quality of the performance determines the pass percentage if the batch has performed very well the pass percentage goes up it is not done well then the pass percentage can come down so therefore eliminate this kind of a notion from your thinking process second one is there a discrimination based on attempts based on centers no the examiner doesn't even know what is which attempt you have appeared this time and he doesn't know from which center you wrote the examination the all your papers are codified and uh, you know they are all shuffled and mixed up and sent to different evaluators so therefore no one would know from which center and what is this attempt you have made up then allocation of marks you know point wise you will get the marks step wise you will get the marks and even if your answers are incomplete you will get proportionate marks so therefore uh, do not have any inhibition on that front so try to attempt as much as possible and maximize your scoring then again is it mandatory to write section numbers is it inevitable to write case law numbers in some of the subjects like company law tax law indirect taxes is it necessary to quote this circular number case law section number all these uh, you know questions keep haunting you let me tell you you know this uh, so long as you are thorough with the principle involved the decision concerned the underlying concept and you are able to present your answer based on that you will get significant marks you will get substantial marks you will get marks good enough to pass good enough even to get a rank if additionally you are in a position to write here and there few section numbers or few names of the cases where it has been decided if you are in a position to refer to some you know citations here and there that will enhance your scoring ability maybe to 5 to 10 percent scoring capacity increases but it is not essential it is not inevitable ingredient and therefore do not stress stretch yourself to strain to remember all these numbers artificially in fact let me tell you if you adopt the strategy which we have discussed putting your heart and soul you enjoy preparing it because the passion is the driving force and you plan methodically and invest your time and you have these three rounds of preparation you know familiarization comprehension and mastering rounds and you also write two model examinations which is practice for performance in the habit of writing the answers comprehending the contents you will be able to remember some important case laws some important section numbers it let it be 10 let it be 20 let it be 30 depending on the capability of each of you you should not standardize what apply what holds good for one student may not hold good for another student you will have to adopt and mold whatever suggestions and recommendations i have given you so far so therefore you will be in a position to write as part of your answer some of the relevant section numbers here and there some of the relevant case laws here and there but it is not all that essential for you to achieve success or to excel so with that comfort zone approach you can pursue and adopt and having said this uh, you know attempted to remove some of your wrong notions let me come back to this last p 
uh, as part of our strategy perseverance let me tell you friends you know it is possible that some of you are listening to me have already appeared and failed and feel shattered about it quite disappointed it is possible that some of you had an excellent academic career track record is so brilliant you were university first you were school first you were college first and you were, you were recipient of certain medals gold medals for some of your accomplishments in the academic uh, pursuits but first time you face failure in the chartered accountancy examination do you think an isolated event defines your personality a single failure mars the growth path or the brightness of your future no do not allow certain events certain isolated events to define your personality failure is nothing but deferment of success postponement of success success being kept in abeyance but that is not the end of the road let me tell you my dear young friends there is no situation in your life which you can describe as end of the road at the most it is only a bend in the road all that you need to do is take a deviation and still reach the destination you will be in a position to reach the destination if only you have perseverance failure is an occasion for you to introspect never find excuses elsewhere do not attribute your failure to extraneous matters put the blame on yourself be tough on you if you are tough on yourself the life will become easy for you if you are easy on yourself life will be tougher for you to experience so therefore success is the method success is the occasion for you to redefine your goals i have achieved this what next what next what next success is the time for you to redefine your goals failure is the time for you to redefine your methods maybe the method you adopted is inadequate is not enough alter your method modify your method so failure is a time for you to introspect change your strategy adopt different methods and still pursue the goal and achieve it success introduces you to the world failure will introduce the world to you that is also an experience which you can learn from failures are painful when they occur like mistakes are painful when they are committed but cumulatively they are called as experience experience is a peculiar teacher unlike some of us who are teachers who teach the lessons and conduct the test experience will first put you to test and then allow you to learn lessons out of it so therefore do not miss any opportunity to learn even out of failures look at these two end out of his failures Th uh, you know look at abraham lincoln the failures he encountered were enormous at every stage he encountered failures but he reached the pinnacle of glory by assuming office as the 16th president of us and uh, he lives now uh, with eternal existence in the history books in the annals of world history us history and what made it possible look at any legend any legendary personality any champion in any event any field any walk of life do you think they have come up without facing failures no they encountered failures they overcome they surpassed it is not the distance that you travel that matters it is the hurdles that you crossed that makes the journey pleasing and charming when you ultimately achieve the goal so therefore from that perspective my dear young friends you know do not give up 
winners never quit and those who quit cannot win and some of you may think is it possible for me to achieve considering my background my humble background and the family background the you know curriculum that i have passed through is it possible for me to comprehend ca look at these two great personalities srinivas ramanujam whose contribution to mathematics field of mathematics was immense which holds good even now and dr apj abdul kalam young as a young boy he used to distribute newspapers to the household doorsteps and later what he became the first citizen of india after which whatever he says the newspapers are carrying it to the households and all of us are from humble background many of us are from humble background you know which makes us think that we may not be able to cross the barriers that appear before us we will not be able to reach the glorious position which others have reached no a teacher in a school asked the children what is the similarity between pandit jawaharlal nehru dr ambedkar dr radha krishnan and so on and so forth there was spinder of silence one student stood up and said they were all born on government holidays but the real truth is they were when they were born those days were not government holidays it was only by what they accomplished later in their life by the passion with which they contributed to the society to the nation the manifestation of their personality the reverence that they inculcated in the human mind that culminated into the government declaring those days as government holidays and therefore each one of us you know when we were born the world did not take notice of our birth maybe our parents and few relatives took notice of our birth we were not born to aishwarya rai and abhishek bachchan to be reported in the newspapers that was not in our choice but the same position need not continue all through our life if saina nehwal can attract the world's attention by our you know shuttle badminton skills if sachin tendulkar can attract the global attention by his cricketing skills why not you attract the world's attention by your professional skills by your technological skills by your finance skills it is possible each one of us can uh, surpass all the hurdles and bottlenecks that we face in our life and can qualify as chartered accountant and accomplish what others think as not possible to achieve so therefore my dear young students you know it is possible for each one of us to pursue these goals whatever mission that you undertake it is not difficult for you to accomplish each one of us need to justify our existence how do we justify our existence by trying to achieve things and make our parents our well wishers our teachers and the society and the nation feel proud about us about our achievements and it is possible for every one of you to overcome the limitations in which you are positioned today and look beyond and cross many more milestones before you reach the goal if india's balance sheet is prepared you know assets and liabilities are positioned where should you fit in the, uh, that balance sheet you should fit into that balance sheet you must justify your existence as somebody who should be reckoned with as the proud citizen of india where should you fit in yourself in the balance sheet of india i am not for a moment trying to suggest that you must fit into the asset side of the balance sheet you can be on the liability side you can be on the asset side but if you are on the asset side try to be the goodwill of india if you are fitting in on the liability side try to be part of the general reserves so that this nation can draw out of you and declare dividend to the humanity at large so with that in mind 
you should be able to face this challenge and comprehend and march ahead and achieve the success and uh, there are only three kinds of people in this world first who make wonders happen next who watch wonders happen third category who wonder what happened but i want all of you to belong to the first category and make wonders happen in fact my dear young friends you know some of the queries that have come through some of the uh, you know questions that have been asked i have attempted to answer it as part of you know my presentation but let me see if there are any further questions that need to be addressed now you know how to learn the section and retain them in the memory for presentation uh, in audit or law paper or any paper that is one of the questions as i was mentioning only by practice by writing model exams by writing and solving by writing theory taking notes you will be in a position to remember the section numbers or case law names one per, one guy wanted to improve his memory power you know what he did he followed a suggestion given by his friend bought memory pills and uh, the advice was take two pills in the morning two in the evening 20 days you must consume and your memory will improve so he started consuming and after 6 days he was searching for the bottle because he forgot where he kept the memory pills bottle artificially you cannot improve the memory power you can improve memory power only by getting more and more familiar with the contents of your syllabus that familiarity will come only by the habit of writing by the habit of solving by the habit of working out so it is mere reading will not help your memory power it's by writing because you write the uh, you write your answers by that method by which you should practice to improve your memory power you just cannot buy a book on how to swim read it 100 times and go and jump into the swimming pool and participate in a swimming competition you have to literally practice by being in the waters how to swim how to do the strokes what kind of strokes and how much it takes you should measure you should monitor your progress and consistently then only you can participate in a swimming competition and that is exactly the same to present answers and improve your memory power you need to practice you must practice recapitulating recalling the answers and that you will do it only when you write model exams another question says uh please sir tell me is it necessary to quote section number i have already answered this you know it is not necessary but by the method of your preparation you will be in a position to quote few sections here and there few names here and there and that is more than good enough and even if none of the answers contain section numbers or case law names but in substance the answer is correct you will get excellent marks kindly tell me something about the answer sheet evaluation with respect to ipcc and final as i said point by point examiners are instructed to deliver the marks and uh, step by step marks are there proportionate marks you will get and uh, therefore you should not be finding it difficult then uh, doing a foreign language course during my article ship uh, as i said besides preparing for your exams besides undergoing your training sincerely and get the practical exposure side by side you can always empower yourself with knowledge and skill sets and one of the skill sets i mentioned is linguistic skill sets so it would be wonderful if you know one regional language one national language one international language and beyond that if time permits nobody can stop you more the merrier but not at the cost of the top two priorities namely practical training and preparing for the examinations then how do you prepare for theory papers preparing for problem oriented subjects theory subjects it is all the same first familiarization round read from beginning to end be thorough in concepts second round comprehension round even in theory subjects write jot down notes points and uh, diagrams draw charts flow charts try to understand the subject comprehend the subject even in problem oriented subjects write the theory first 
be thorough on the concept of holding company, subsidiary company, then solve problems on those uh, concepts. So learn the uh, theory on break-even point, on uh, operation co uh, cost. Just be thorough with the theory, then solve the problems. So that is how in every subject the approach is the same. Then uh, another question is about uh, how do I bridge the gap in my preparation because I am not able to present whatever I prepare. Model exams. Two model exams is the best way to prepare. Model uh, mark the questions. So all those are some of the you know techniques that you need to adopt. Then yet another student is asking, uh, will, you, will I be able to understand the concept without att attending any coaching classes? As I said, self-study should be good enough. Only thing is you need to plan well in advance because the time that you will consume will be longer. So on that basis, you will have to approach. Uh, whereas with the help of a faculty, you should be in a position to master the subject much faster and better. You can pick and choose also for which subject you, you need all that guidance. Then uh, I want your help and to know uh, how to prepare for costing and financial management and taxation. As I said, there is no different techniques for different subjects. It is only the same approach that is required to be done. Which is the most scoring subject in CA final? You can ask the same question in uh, IPCC also. Which is the most scoring subject? Interesting question. I'll answer this like this. You ask for statistics from the ICI in any attempt which is the first mark in every subject. You talk of auditing, you talk of uh, company law, you talk of you know indirect taxes, direct taxes, mafia, any subject you ask for the first mark. I am not asking about the marks of a student who got All India First Rank. Even All India First Rank, if you see it, one subject it might be in 90s, another subject 50s, another subject 60s, no, that is not what I am suggesting. In every subject, in every attempt in the history of the institute, you ask for the first mark in any subject, you will be surprised to know it is always in 90s, if not at least in 80s. That, what does it prove? It proves that every subject is a scoring subject. Because some student is able to score in 90s in every sub, uh, in uh, any of the subjects. Somebody has scored 90s in whatever subject you think it is difficult to score. So it is not, the, there is no deficiency of scoring capability as far as the subjects are concerned. Every subject can be high scoring subject. It is only the aptitude that you have, the inclination that you have, the motivation that you have with which you pursue the subject that translates into the scoring capability. So therefore, every subject is a high scoring subject. Another student says, I study a lot, but even I am not able to cross 55% due to poor presentation. As I told you, preparation is one part of the whole strategy. Presentation is a critical part. So practice for presentation, for performance in the examination, please write two model examinations. For your, uh, you know, for example, if it is uh, final, start with the first paper, write consecutive days, eight examinations, ending with indirect taxes. Then second model exam, start with indirect taxes, end with the first paper on accountancy. So that your real exam accountancy is facing you and you are already uh, ready for that. Then how, do, how to answer a practical question in the final examination, auditing subject. This is a, another 
important question uh, this student has asked. See, in your examination, if there are straightforward questions or questions on concepts, many of you find it easy to answer them. But if there is a case study, a practical question, where your opinion is asked, your view is asked, your finding is asked, your conclusion is expected to be returned, how do you answer that question? Whether it is in auditing paper or in company law paper or in taxation paper or for that matter any paper when a practical case study is given and your view is asked or your opinion is asked, present your answer in three parts. First part of the question must contain the facts given in the question analyzed by you in simple language. Whatever is information is given in the question, in the case study, you are rewriting it by splitting them into simple sentences as how you have understood it. In fact, I can tell many of you, when you read the question, you will understand it to a certain extent when you pick out the facts or the information in the question and analyze them in your own way, the understanding will be much better, much clearer, 100%. So, first part of the answer, you are only picking out the facts and information and analyzing it, first part. Second part, for these facts, what principle you have to apply, which assurance standard gives that principle, which section gives you that principle, which case law gives you that principle, which notification, which gives you that principle. So, borrow that principle and write that. Second paragraph, second part of the answer will contain only the relevant principles, concepts involved. So, you are done with two-third of the answer without a reaching the conclusion. Now, first part as the facts as given in the question, second part as the relevant principles that are required to be applied. Now, read these two. Automatically, your mind will feed you with the conclusion which is most appropriate to the situation. Then you write, given the facts, given the principles involved, this is the conclusion. So, the third part only should contain your findings, your conclusions, your solutions to the case study, which will get the critical marks. I have seen many students writing the answer by starting with the third part first. This expenditure is not admissible because you have stopped thinking for the answer within few words and concluded it and for the rest of the answer you are going to justify what conclusion you have already reached. Have an open mind, pick out the facts and write as first part, recapitulate the principles applicable and write the second part, read them, you have phenomenal amount of time as you do these two parts your subconscious mind will be processing the facts and the principles to give you the solution, give you the answer. Comfortably you will reach the right conclusion and that third part, assuming, just for argument's sake, even assuming your conclusion is not the appropriate one, the way you have analyzed it, the way you have incorporated the relevant principles correctly in the second part, you will get proportionate marks. So, therefore, adopt that pattern to answer practical questions. How, do, how to manage time during articleship period to study? As I said, morning 2 hours, evening 2 hours. If not, at least morning 1 hour, evening 1 hour. Otherwise, at least half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the evening. Coupled with weekend, about 10 hours, 12 hours to supplement your preparation. Consistently keep doing by the time you get study holidays, you would have been through with most of the subjects and then the revision will happen effectively 
and you will have time to write model exams. Is it necessary uh, to have guidance from outside? I, as I have already told you, it is not uh, inevitable, but student to student, the perception can be different. And again, uh, you can pick and choose for the outside external guidance. Whether model answers are available with examiners at the time of evaluation of papers, yes. They are provided with the model answers and uh, they are also instructed about the pattern of allotting marks and there are checks and balances and uh, students interest is uh, preserved with utmost care at all stages so that for no fault of the student, the student would not suffer. That is ensured by the ICI. Subject wise guidelines, as I said, all subjects have to be treated alike and what strategy applies to one subject applies to all subjects. So you need not discriminate or differentiate. Only one aspect on which you can differentiate or discriminate is in apportioning the time. You need not distribute the time equally to all subjects. You can distribute them equitably. So some subjects may demand more time, some subjects less time. So that you will know. And it will not be uniform for all students. So equitable distribution of time can be done. Do we need to prepare for all topics from the books provided by ICI? As I said, ICI study material plus one textbook will help you to comprehend and master the subject thoroughly. You can use them to complement each other. You can keep ICI material as the base material and textbook as the referencer. Or for certain subjects, you can keep the textbook as the base material and keep ICI material as the referencer. And even to do solve variety of problems, you know, you can borrow problems from the materials of ICI and uh, the textbooks. So that will give you wider exposure in solving more and more problems. What is the way to score good marks? Uh, you know, the whole lecture is about how to prepare with a view to score good marks. And, uh, you know, sometimes students lose out on marks mainly because, uh, you know, uh, they spend too much time on solving one question. Suppose there is a compulsory question which carries 30 marks, 25 marks. The student keeps logging to solve that question and in the process he spends 90 minutes. So 90 minutes for 25 marks and for the remaining 75 marks he will be struggling, he will be rushing to solve, spend the remaining 90 minutes which is an incorrect approach. So two points, as I said, time management, ration your answer and time proportionately, sequence it accordingly so that and nothing comes in the way of your attempting 100 marks, that is one approach. Second approach is, suppose there is a lengthy question, fortunately you have 15 mark, minutes to read the questions before the 180 minutes commence that make use of it effectively. Second thing is, when the question is very lengthy, how do you present the answer? How do you approach it? How do you handle it? How do you, how do you attack such questions? Do you remember the story of an old man and his three sons, which you must have uh, learnt it in the school? See, the father was concerned about lack of uh, harmony or uh, you know, unanimity among the sons. They keep quarreling always. So the father calls the three sons, gives them a bundle of sticks, asking them to break it. Each one of them try, they are not able to break the bundle of sticks. Then the father asks them to open the bundle, take one by one, stick by stick and break it. They are able to break all the sticks smoothly, easily. The moral of the story is, united you stand, divided you fall. Now you may ask, what is the relevance to the CA examination? Whenever an examination examiner is giving you a lengthy question, 
remember it as bundle of sticks look at it as bundle of sticks so examiner has bundled so much information and asking you to break it if you keep looking at the bundle you get astonished by the size of the question you will not be able to break it open the bundle pick out information in segments so one set of information will help you to uh, do working note number 1 and solve and reach one figure take another set of information and so working note number 2 working note number 3 4 5 so arrive at the components of the answers by picking out information and solving them in bits and pieces and side by side write some of the assumptions or notes then whatever derivatives you have got out of the working notes you bundle all of that and give it as the solution to the examiner he gave you bundle of sticks containing uh, i mean in the form of question you are giving the broken sticks in the form of answers solution so that is how you will have to handle then you will find that you are able to smoothly handle as far as uh, you know voluminous questions are also concerned i also want to know whether we rather just understand the concept see uh, at the ipcc level you should have reasonable working knowledge at cpt level basic knowledge so cpt level concept is good enough ipcc level besides knowing the concept you must work out few problems and at final level you should be prepared for practical case studies analytical questions and you should be in a position to apply the principles you know in different set of situations or questions then uh, yet another thing is how many years question paper should be solved as you are preparing you know uh, there is no uh, standardized uh, you know set of question papers that you need to solve as you are uh, going through the comprehension round mastering round pick out a random basis few questions and try to solve them besides you are going to answer two model question papers isn't it so include some of the past question uh, question paper questions also as part of the model question papers so in that process if you are able to glance through or solve about five examinations five attempts that should be good enough then uh, two months left how to prepare for cps cpt cpt is an objective type of questions uh, to be handled so uh, and if in plus 2 if you have done cbsc syllabus the syllabus of cpt more or less relates to that barring that you need to know little more about uh, certain subjects like maybe economics or mercantile uh, mercantile law but otherwise uh you know accountancy or quantitative uh, techniques all those things are more or less uh, synchronizing with the 12th subject so therefore you should be in a position to master and revise and then approach uh, and write the objective type of questions which are asked in cpt examination so that should not be any uh, posing any difficulty for you as we are nearing uh, you know uh, the time allotted to us that is 8 pm let me see whether there are any new questions that i can take up uh, some of the students are asking is it mandatory to study rtp before exams despite material see it is a question of testing your knowledge through various materials that are available and rtp is one such good uh, you know source of uh, questions with which you can test you can compare and you can verify whether you are you know up to the mark up to the standard that's all see suggested answers rtps will empower you with an idea as to how to go about making presentation of answers and uh, even if you are in a position to uh mark up to 60% of rtp level or suggested level of answers you should feel you are almost 100% good that's how uh, that uh, standardization happens the volume of answer that is given is 
you know much more than what you are expected to write in the examination so therefore uh, try to measure up measure up to that standard so that even if difficult questions are asked you will be in a position to handle them properly then uh, yet another question is which is better group wise or both the groups at ipcc level the same question can be asked for final level also if you can plan methodically systematically both the groups is an ideal situation because all of us know the surplus in one group will come handy for the other group for you to get the aggregate so therefore ideal situation is to prepare and appear for both the groups but unavoidably due to extraneous circumstances due to your personal reasons it is possible that you are not in a position to prepare for both the groups then attempt to group wise there is no uh, don't have any inhibition at all if consciously you believe that you are caliber in terms of digesting so many subjects at a time is not is not easy then take a conscious view that i will prepare group wise and appear group wise absolutely no difficulty your self confidence should be sustained by your actions so therefore don't put yourself in a uh, situation which is beyond your comprehension and then struggle uh, with a low uh, level of confidence so therefore ideal situation is to attempt both the groups which most of you should be able to easily do it but exceptionally you can opt for group wise appearance also numerical sequence while solving an examination is an image maker what the student is trying to ask is if i answer the questions 1 2 3 3 a 3 b 3 c 3 d then 4 like that the person who is evaluating will get a good image about the student that he knows everything is answering uh, don't go by the, that kind of a illusion this is only imaginary feeling look at a situation where you know the first question moderately and you write it in the process you commit two three mistakes second question you don't know at all i mean you know the least but still you are answering the uh, and then the third question brilliant uh, presentation what kind of impression you have given to the examiner the examiner will form his opinion also based on the standard of your answering so therefore i would recommend the third question which you know the best could have been answered at the first that's why i said divide all the questions into three parts well known easy answer well known difficult or time consuming answer then finally rest of the questions can be attempted that would be an ideal way of approaching in practical problems does presentation such as drawing of accounts with pencil writing all these things you know the small small things of drawing the line you know neatly numbering it and uh, where do you finish your answer uh, how do you start your answer all the, and how do you number the points how do you refer to the working notes everything matters these are all small tiny things but you know in gathering 100 marks all these things cumulatively play a role and two students who write the same answer i may not be surprised one getting 5 marks out of 6 marks another getting 4 marks out of 6 marks both have written the same answers but the method of presentation has got this student one mark more than the other student imagine in a six mark question one mark or half a mark can come extra how much will come in answering all the questions like this purely out of your presentation skills they do matter in your scoring capability how to avoid examination a fear on examination days if you are prepared by adopting the strategy that we discussed just now and write two model exams you won't know the meaning of fear as you walk into the examination hall 
you know how you will walk into the examination hall after writing two model exams you will walk in challenging within yourself if not me who else can pass if not now when else am i going to pass i am going to pass this attempt with best of the marks with that confidence you will be walking in fear will be unknown to you so therefore stop conclude your preparation effectively at least you know two weeks for ipcc 20 days for final before the examination and use that time gap for revising and writing model exams two model exams you can set your own model exams in your own study place you can write for 3 hours 2 to 5 model exam and in the night one hour you spend on correcting those evaluating that for reassuring yourself don't bother if you have committed mistakes if you have omitted points because only by committing mistakes and by identifying those mistakes you will ensure you will not repeat those mistakes in the real exam and your memory power will be improvised you will it will be strengthened what points you missed out which you have noticed you will not miss it in the real exam when those questions come so you have to destroy the fear and destroying the fear by writing model exam is the best way to achieve it how much answer we should write for each question is the next question maybe i'll take that as the last question as i mentioned in a professional examination it is not the size of the answer that matters it is the quality of the answer the quality brevity clarity legibility with which you write the answer that matters those qualities will automatically come to you if you have only the first round familiarization round i have asked you to read second round onwards it is a sin if a ca student sits to prepare without a pen and a paper or a notebook from comprehension round to master round then to practice for performance by writing two model exams everything is by writing so as you keep writing writing solving problems working out solutions repeatedly 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 and monitor the progress in terms of speed and accuracy automatically you will know how much to write for each question only one additional point you can bear in mind the number of marks given to the question suppose the uh, one question is asked with 20 marks you write accordingly a little bit lengthy answer same question short notes two marks write limited points write two three points maximum four points that is good enough for two marks maybe if it is carrying 20 marks you try to write 20 points so ration your answer the size can be proportionate to the number of marks that are given but otherwise what matters is the quality and not the size so with this you know thought process uh, i wish you all the very best may success come to you by the methodology of your preparation dedication and determination i am sure you will all qualify as chartered accountant i look for a day when all of you will emerge out as chartered accountants and join this noble profession and i'll be happy to feel that all of you are my colleagues in the profession so with that positive note i appreciate icii board of studies for organizing this two hour webcast program so that uh, students across the country geographical locations are benefited and i am sure you can pick up as many points as suits you in the process of this presentation and mold it adopt it to suit your environment and your personal background and come out with flying colors put your heart and soul give your best success awaits you all the very best god bless you thank you